Hey guys, hope you're doing well today. I want to thank all my new subscribers and thanks for all the uh, comments. A shout out to Pyroman uh, for all the comments. He's definitely my top com commenter. Um, in this video, I want to show you how to properly solder uh, wires. Now, this is going to be very helpful for you if you're working on your car, truck, or even wires in your house. And obviously, uh, make sure there is no current going through the wires. And oftentimes I'll read online or in, um, uh, I'll see in training videos, they often say crimping is better than soldering. And in my experiences, that's never been the case. So I'm going to kind of prove my point and we're going to do, I'm going to show you how to solder and use some heat shrink. And then we're going to also, with the same size type of wire, we're going to uh, do a crimp connection. And then we're going to do a uh, stress test. We're going to try to pull them apart and see which one is stronger. So let's get started here. All right, so for our test, I'm gonna use some uh, 16 gauge wire that you'll commonly find on your car, uh, trailers, everything. So, and I have just a regular um, wire connector here, crimp connection, all right? And then we're also gonna test, uh, I'm gonna solder a wire and the solder I recommend using is like a 60-40 um, solder, and I'll put a, a link in the description of a uh, website that gives a good description of all the different types of solder and what they're used for. But uh, what I would recommend using for your automotive needs or just regular, just soldering copper wire would be 60-40. Uh, uh, you're gonna need a um, soldering iron, and I like, I like to use these type of strippers. I don't. I only use these for when I need to crimp because I find these awkward to, you know, strip the wire. You know, I'm trying to get into place and I'm having to, you know, this is just awkward and bulky. Where um, these are pretty nice. You can get in there. Um, I, I especially like these because you can kind of sit here and just dial it in to whatever size wire you're about to strip. So, you know, if I wanted um, 14 or 12 right there, I could do that. So these are pretty handy. I like these. Um, these are some really old ones, probably about 20 years old or more uh, that I've had. You can take a flat blade, uh, flathead screwdriver and, and adjust it. And then you're also gonna need some heat shrink. Uh, you can get heat shrink from, in these little uh, assortments like pack packages, different colors. Um, one thing I don't like about that is they're always just already cut to a length that's a little too short in some cases. I like to buy them in uh, really long uh, strips so I can cut them uh, longer if I need it, needed to. Alright, so first with this yellow wire, I'm going to put my, my crimp in there, my crimp connection. And you always want to use a, a crimp tool that's des designed for crimping. You don't want to just use regular needle nose pliers. So what I'm doing, I'm pushing that wire all the way in until it bottoms out. The rubber insulation bottoms out on the metal inside of there. And you'll notice I've cut, these are a little bit shorter because you can't, uh, I want to cut it a little shorter than I do when I uh, solder. Because when I solder, I like to twist them. So now that's nice and tight, feels pretty good. That's about an average uh, crimp connection. Now. I've often read online where they act like <clears throat> this this will keep water out of it, and that's not true. If you've ever worked on a trailer with wiring, you know that that water is going to get in there, corrode away. These eventually get loose and just fall out of there. Now, when I go to um, to uh, solder some wire, I cut them a little bit, I, I strip them down, giving me a little bit longer, um, and you also want a little bit longer uh, copper wire there. And you also want to twist them. And now, now's the time to put some heat shrink on here. But since we're not connected, we'll do that later. Uh, but if these were connected, you just oftentimes I'll forget before I solder, then I have to pull it apart and redo it. But just make sure you put your slip your heat shrink on. And you want to get that heat shrink away, far away as you can, far enough away. So when you heat this wire, it doesn't heat up and start shrinking the heat the heat shrink and that makes it very annoying then you can't move it over over the connection 
Now when I do this, I like to just kind of make an X and this is, like I said, this is 16 gauge wire. And when you twist it, you want to make sure that you don't have any pieces of wire uh, sticking out, like sharp um, parts of the wire sticking out. So when you slip that uh, heat, like say for example, this right here, this little strand right there, you don't want, you want to make sure all those are nice and tight and down. Um, one drawback to soldering is it does take, it takes longer. So I plugged up my soldering iron. This thing's going to get super, super hot. So you got to be really careful um, not to burn yourself or burn other things or where you place it once you're done. Um, that, you know, you might set it right here and, and be burning away at your, um, the rubber coating on your pliers. So you just got to be very careful. And also what I recommend is if you haven't used it in a while, they'll kind of get oxidated where, um, you know, when you go to apply the solder, it'll just roll off of there. So a lot of times I'll just kind of scrape the, um, scrape the tip a little bit. And that way you can kind of form a nice little puddle of solder on the, on the end of the tip. So while that's heating up, I'm going to show you one other thing, how I twisted these wires. Sometimes if you have like some thicker 12 gauge wire, um, you don't, it's harder to twist these around where it's not sticking out past the, the edge of the, of the um, insulation. So another way you can do it is just kind of spread these out just a little bit, not that much. And you can just kind of put them together like this and then just push that down. And I, I really don't like doing it this way, but sometimes it's just the size of the wire. It might be the best way to do it. And then when you slip that heat shrink over there, after you've soldered it, it keeps the nice uh, consistent outside diameter. All right, so you want to get the wire in a spot where you can easily um, kind of solder it with the iron and the, and the solder. But as I'm heating up here, I'm just going to kind of start adding a little bit of solder. And here's the trick. Um, oftentimes I see people just sitting here trying to tap the wire. You don't want to do that. You want to, they'll put the uh, uh, iron with no solder on the tip and they'll put it up against the wire and they're having a hard time getting it to uh, solder. What you want to do is get a nice, big, juicy pile of hot solder on there. And then as it's getting hot, I haven't even touched the wire yet. What you're going to do is just hold it right there. Hold some pressure and you see how it just melts right into there. All right. And that's good right there. It's complete. And I can promise you this is a much stronger connection. And now I'm about to prove that. Now, once this is all hot right here, it's still warm to the touch, just out even outside on this um, insulation. So if you if I had my heat shrink too close to that, it would start collapsing. It was the heat shrink would start um, collapsing down, shrinking onto the wire, and you wouldn't be able to slip it over. So just make sure you have that nice and far away, so uh, that heat is transferring through here. You don't want it to start heating the heat shrink up. So now it's kind of cooled off where I can touch it and just, I can slip it over and I could take the lighter and, and, um, and shrink this down. But for the test, I'm not going to do that just yet because I want you to be able to see, uh, that this is the soldered wire and that I didn't swap out the wire, uh, with a regular piece of wire that hasn't been soldered or anything. All right, so now I got my two equal length uh, pieces of wire. One's got a crimp connection and one has my soldered connection. Now let's see how strong each one of them is. And the way we're gonna test that is I'm gonna take this three pound weight and I'm gonna tie it to uh, one end of the wire to the weight. And then I'm gonna tie the other end of this hook and then we're gonna drop it and see which one is stronger. All right, so I haven't put any pressure on it. You can see the wires, the, the crimp connection is strong enough to just support this weight, but to make this uh, test equally 
uh, compare, compared as fair as possible. So I'm going to measure from the floor. Uh, we're about 16 and 3 quarter there from the floor up to the bottom of that weight. So when I test the, the other one, we're going to get the same amount of uh, drop to where once it applies that pressure, it'll be at the same amount. Well, first, and then I'm going to, I'm going to put my foam mat here so it doesn't damage my concrete floor when it breaks. And now what I'm going to do is simply slide the weight off. Just ex what I expected. All right, guys, I am so confident in this soldered connection that I'm going to let this weight drop even further, which is going to apply more pressure to the connection. So right here on the other, other connector, we fell. Uh, it didn't apply the pressure until it reached down to 16 and three quarter. We're going to go with three quarters of an inch further down, uh, giving this weight more time to drop and get more added pressure. You can see my soldered connection there. Slide my mat right here. And we're going to do the same thing, except we're actually, this is actually going to be applying more pressure than what we did on the uh, crimp connection. See? That's why I solder. Look at that. It actually failed right here. My soldered connection is stronger than that wire. And one other tip guys, when you have a connector like this, like this is just a regular crimped connection here, got it on there, feels okay. These often come loose after time, they corrode away, and all it's holding that wire is just that, that it's just crimped, this metal's just crimped against the wire. Here's what I like to do. All right, I'll take that same connector and I'm going to remove this plastic collar right here. Take that off. All right, so now I'm going to crimp it and solder it. So we have it crimped. All right, so we're coming back in here. We're gonna get my puddle going. And now what I'm doing is I'm applying that puddle. It's heating up everything. And you don't have to move the soldering iron at all. It's transferring the heat. And I'm just laying down in a bunch of solder Now let that cool. Still kind of hot, but you can see how that solder soaked in there pretty good. And now for the final finishing touch, put your heat shrink there. Which do you think is stronger? Just a crimp. And another good thing is that doing it this way keeps a nice, smooth, consistent outside diameter versus this that's going to get you know, caught on things or whatever. And one last thing. Which one looks like it's more resistant to corrosion? Water is a lot less likely to get in here. I could heat this down a little bit more. There is a little bit of glue on the um, inside of that 
heat shrink gives a nice tight seal water can easily get in there and start corroding away on this type of connection same thing for this connection I can put some heat shrink on there and it will be nice and sealed up from any any water or corrosion getting in there uh, versus a crimp connection water is going to get in there and start corroding away now here it is with some heat shrink applied and heated and which one looks better I mean you got this big edge out here it just it just looks unprofessional not only is it stronger watertight it's also stronger solder it use heat shrink Despite what you may read online on some websites where they say all oh, crimp connections are stronger, in my experience doing this 20 plus years, that's never been the case. Um, I've got real world experience and I just showed you a real world demonstration. I have nothing to gain. Uh, I don't have an investment in solder or soldering irons. All right, so just helping you guys out, making them a, a stronger, um, more professional looking connection wire connection yes it takes a little bit longer but the results are far better so if you like this video I hope you'll hit that like button and if you please subscribe I would really appreciate it and feel free to make any comments ask questions uh, I'm gonna have more videos like this coming soon so thanks and I'll see you next time